Good morning, church. It is Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. Happy New Year to you and yours. It is good to begin this year together worshiping God and being a part of this beloved community in exile. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. If you haven't already gone to our website and clicked on the Watch Live button, I encourage you to do that. You'll find Sermon Bingo there for all ages. You'll find an at-home worship guide plus much, much more. One of the things you'll find there is an opportunity to sign up to read and record for upcoming worship services. We hope that you will uh, go there and sign up and be a reader for us and participate in worship. It's so good when we get to see those faces that we miss from this place. And if you're hesitant to record, just let us know, email Ernie, and we'll figure out a way to safely come and help you record if that's an issue. Worship this morning is going to be built around a word from the prophet Jeremiah, from what is called the Little Book of Consolations. It seems like an appropriate message for us in this time. So let us begin worship now together, encountering God and God's spirit with us as we worship God with joy this day. Good morning. Hear these words as we are called to gather for worship. There is something deeper than trouble. It is mercy. God's amazing grace, carrying, lifting, holding us in all seasons. There is something more powerful than despair. It is mercy. God's amazing love, seeing us through dark nights, waves of sadness, mountains of grief. There is something longer lasting than pain. It is mercy. God's healing touch, bringing us hope, leading us to joy, teaching us to sing. Let us worship the God of amazing grace, love, and healing. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lowly exile here, until Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come the day spangled Spirits by thy justice here Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadows put to flight Rejoice, rejoice Let us pray. For peace that surpasses human knowledge and understanding, we come to you, O Lord. You have revealed yourself to us as the Prince of Peace. May the spirit of peace that flows from the life and teachings of Jesus come upon us as a congregation, individually and collectively. May we in this hour experience that peace through the same Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. I hope that you had a super Merry Christmas and a very, very festive New Year. I hope that you had the chance to think about all the things that we have been through in the last year and what this coming year might look like. Of course, we learned this year that we don't have a lot of control over what happens, right, in our world, but we can have control over how much we connect with God 
and how we can remind other people that God loves them so much. Did you make any New Year's resolutions this year? A New Year's resolution is a decision that you make for something that you want to do better in the coming year. You can make a resolution anytime, but it's a long-standing tradition that on New Year's Eve, people make a decision and they resolve, they have a resolution to do something differently or something new in the coming year. Maybe you have a New Year's resolution to get along better with your brothers and sisters. Maybe your New Year's resolution is to always get your homework done on time. Maybe your New Year's resolution is to walk the dog every day. Whatever it is, I hope that it's something that you can do that will make you feel happier and make your family feel more loved. I hope it's something that reminds you of how special you are to everyone who knows you and to God. Now, we would love it if everything went back to normal because it's a new year, right? But we're still living in this hard time with COVID and other challenges. We're still not exactly where we want to be. But you know what is new every single morning? The love that God has for us. It's new every day. It's new every morning. It says that in the Bible. So even if you make a resolution and you have a hard time sticking to it, you're still beloved and valuable. And God's love is going to be new and there for you every single day, no matter what. I think that that is the greatest thing that we can have in the new year. In the old year, in every year, God's love is the greatest thing. So maybe your resolution will be to help share that love with others or to remind yourself every day that when you wake up, you know that God loves you. You open your eyes and you say, oh, today is going to be a great day because God loves me. Or maybe you say, you know what? I don't feel great today, but I think I can make it through because God loves me. And that's going to start fresh every day when I open my eyes and it will never go away. So I hope That as we go into this year, and even if things are challenging and hard, you can hold on to the truth that God's love is new every day and it's just for you. God knows you and loves you so much. And I think that we all can use a reminder of that at the beginning of this year and at the beginning of every day. You are so, so loved by God and by this church and by me. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your love that's new every day. Thank you for new beginnings, even when things don't begin when we want them to. Thank you for the ways that you show your love and your friendship to us with fresh beginnings and new mornings and new years. We ask that you will remind us of the ways we are loved and help us to love others and care for those who are cold and hungry and help us see how we can help those who are cold and hungry. And we ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Happy New Year. Good morning. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Selemiah 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shout for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest part of the earth, among them the blind in the land, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolation I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastland far away. 
Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and he has redeemed him from the hand too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant all of the goodness of the Lord, all of the grain, the wine, and the oil, and all of the young of the flock and the head. Their life shall become like a watered garden, for they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the breeze their fill of fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let's pray. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, in our living. Amen. I've been homesick before. Have you? When I moved to Boston for seminary, it was an exciting time. I was going to live across the country in a city full of knowledge, art, and history. And it was on the coast. I love living on the coast. After the initial excitement wore off, I felt homesickness settling in. Sure, I knew I would be going home for a few weeks around Christmas when the semester was over. There were plenty of pages to read, essays and papers to write, lectures to attend, worship and spiritual growth and fellowship to be had, a new city and a new coast to explore. Deep down in the pit of my being, I missed home. I missed my mom's house and its familiarity. I missed my mom and brother and grandmother. I missed more than that. I missed the sights and sounds and smells of my neighborhood and of Southern California. I missed the food. Don't get me wrong, Boston has amazing food, but it didn't have the food of my childhood, adolescence, and early adulthood. Honestly, I could not find a decent avocado or salsa or taco or the like anywhere in the city. I had to search for ingredients to make the food that most spoke to my soul of comfort, of home. And I missed the coast of the Pacific. Sure, the Atlantic coast is stunning around Boston, and it's much cleaner than it used to be. But it wasn't the beaches and the shoreline that I knew that felt comfortable and familiar to me. To make sure everyone knew of my homesickness, I put on my dorm room's answering machine. This was way back when we had big answering machines next to our home landlines. The chorus for California Dreaming by the Mamas and the Papas. If you called and left a message, you had to endure my message to you. I missed home. Maybe you have a story like that, too. We all know what it's like at some point to be homesick, to miss all that is home. I eventually did go home. I was fortunate enough that winter to get on the last plane allowed out of Boston Logan Airport in the middle of a wicked nor'easter. We had record, record snowfall that year, and I would have been trapped on the East Coast for about a week had my plane not taken off. When home, I got my fill of all I missed. It was all there in abundance. It soothed my soul. It filled me with joy. It charged my batteries so that I could go back and take on another challenging semester. I was beyond grateful for that time to connect what was a natural part of me. Jeremiah's words in today's reading are a divine message to the homesick. This will end and you will go home again. God's grace is with you always. God will redeem that which is broken. This is good news to the weary spirits Jeremiah spoke to. You see, for on and off for about 40 years, Jeremiah's prophecies were gloom and doom, warning of impending death and destruction. He was not a happy or encouraging prophet. He was a true prophet, true to God's word for the people, and while that did not make him popular or well-liked, he made sure to share with the people that God's love is with them always. Even in exile, God did not abandon them. Tucked in the middle of these pronouncements of gloom and doom are three chapters known as the Book of Consolation. These are words to the homesick Israelites in exile in Babylon. They are genuine words to those who are feeling despair settle into their hearts and spirits. These three chapters contain some of the most beloved scriptures in the whole biblical library. A couple of verses before our passage for today is the line, I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. And a few verses after our reading, it says, But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Who doesn't love this message from God? Who doesn't appreciate these words of comfort and consolation and hope from God? God's love is unconditional. The covenant is everlasting and is within us, tattooed on our hearts. What a message of comfort and joy. It's like I Love It, L.A. by Randy Newman for our spirits. What a gift these chapters are tucked away to be discovered. Words of divine consolation and hope to God's people in exile. Balm for weary souls. Words, it turns out, that speak to us and to our current homesickness. The Israelites who received this divine message read by Vika today were exiled in Babylon. Under foreign power, they left their homes and homeland devastated and war-torn, a shell of what it once was. The people yearned for home and for their, their homeland. They longed for what they remembered, the sights, the sounds, the taste, the familiarity. They missed the freedom and relief that came from their own space and place. They missed the problems and challenges that came from occupying their land and having power and say over how they lived upon it. They were homesick. Their hearts and spirits were weary and afraid. They felt disconnected and abandoned by God. Was God with them in exile? Would God care for them and lead them home? That's what they wanted more than anything. Home. They yearned for home. They yearned for familiarity and freedom. They yearned for routine and opportunity. They yearned for community and for the abundant life that they knew as God's people in the land that God promised their ancestors. It is to these experiences of suffering and dislocation that Jeremiah's divine message speaks. God promises to bring the people home again. Doesn't matter how far and wide they are, sc are scattered, the, the scripture proclaims, to the farthest corners of the earth. God will bring them home again. God won't let them wander around without, direct without direction. God will make the way straight and clear. And the homeland God will return them to won't be devastated and war-torn any longer. It will be a land of abundance and life. It will speak to that sense of home on all levels and with all senses. The joy this message brings the people is overwhelming. It is music to their ears. It invites dance and song, shouts and celebration. It's kind of like what I experienced going for tacos or in and out when I got home from school. A party in my tummy, so yummy. The message of return and joy it brings reminds me of the feast the father created when the prodigal son returned home. The joy spoken of in this passage is like what the father shared at his son's homecoming. All is well, restored, whole. And this brings joy upon joy. It is felt at the depths and the heights of one's body, soul, and spirit. God's care is intimate and practical and organic. God promises to provide everything they need, not only per material need, but also emotional and spiritual need. Like a parent cares for a child, so God will care for God's people. The care, the scripture continues, will be all-inclusive. God will not leave anyone behind. Those who struggle or might be vulnerable will be included in those that God will bring home. The 
pain and struggle they've encountered will come to an end. God will deliver them. Such hope. Such good news. Jeremiah's message is that God offers the homesick the promise of love, renewal, and redemption. Words of consolation and hope to people in exile. God will not abandon you. This will not go on forever. And God will save the people from their enemies and from themselves. That's music to our ears, isn't it? Don't our weary spirits and homesick souls need to hear these promises of hope and words of consolation? Turns out God's grace always shows up in hard times. And when the hard times end, we will be closer to God than ever before when we trust and follow. How's God's grace shown up for you during these hard times? I've I've seen it show up in a number of powerful ways to our community in exile. We are indeed homesick, and yet God's not abandoned us. God's worked through us and our challenging times to help us until we are finally back home together. I know I, for one, did not expect to develop my relationship with you through a screen. I wasn't taught in seminary on how to lead worship online, nor was there a class about how to pastor in a pandemic. It's been months now of worshiping online, and I can safely say that I still don't like seeing or hearing myself through the screen. And yet, by God's grace and this gift of technology, I'm able to share worship with you weekly in a way that allows all of us to be safe and to have the the opportunity to encounter God together. I think about how when Jackie Hyatt was hospitalized for three weeks early on in the pandemic, she was able to worship still with our church community each week thanks to the tablet she had with her and the fact that we live streamed worship in a way that, so long as she could connect to the internet, she could hear and see her beloved church and its members and staff sharing words of comfort and hope. That has to have helped her spirit and her healing during that time. I think about how Risa and Adriana reimagined Vacation Bible School in such a way that they offered a program that could be done at a family's preferred pace over the course of the summer and that the program reached families outside our church family and in the, in the community and also across the country. When parents were scrambling to find ways to share the message of Jesus with their kids, Beach Faith Kids provided. They also helped sponsor, in less restrictive times, a jack-o'-lantern walk through the courtyard that brought about 150 people onto our campus, most of whom were not affiliated with our church. Talk about outreach and making the world our parish. I think about how Shared Bread continues to offer meals every Wednesday to about 100 people and how God's grace works through this team of volunteers that show up weekly to safely provide food, clothing, and other essentials to our guests. When much of our community shut down because of pandemic restrictions, there was no way Shared Bread was going to shut down if it could help it. I saw God's grace at work in the ways our church staff and leadership worked to care for the facility for our staff and for the church through this time. For example, our finance team worked with the church council to get PPP funds so we could pay our staff in bills. And then they worked on the paperwork to try and get these funds forgiven. Our UMW circles figured out how to connect with one another over Zoom. Our youth group found ways to connect and share life and faith. Children's Sunday School has had a steady fun group that meets together on Sunday mornings before worship to learn and to share. We've had adult online studies with participants from all over the country. Thanks to Ernie, the staff, and Liz Giori and her team, we've been able to deliver care packages to most of your homes and often get a a chance to safely say hello to you, hearing about pandemic puppies, health challenges, yearnings for things to return to normal, and much more. There were a lot of firsts this past year, a lot of getting over things I might not like or were out of my control and learning to trust God more. 
It is hard to be a community in exile, homesick and yearning for home. It's hard to see past the challenges and the barriers, the fear and the impatience, to trust the straight path, the words of encouragement and consolation and care of a God whose grace is always present and wants our hard times to end. It can be hard to see how God was and is at work in our lives and in our community, especially when we are not gathered physically home here together. And yet, God's grace was and is at work in ways I've named and so many more. What joy it brings to see and know of God's care for us through this time. It fills my weary and tired homesick heart with deep gratitude. Like the people of Israel in exile in Babylon, we've got a choice to make. Do we stay stuck and put where we are, homesick, disconnected, weary, and afraid? Or do we trust God and God's promises and accept the invitation to find our way home? Do we get that God's not done with us and in fact God's grace is at work in these hard times? Do we trust God's care for us while we endure this time of exile and know it won't last forever? This passage is nestled in the season of Christmas to show us yet another sign that God is not done, that God will not allow us to end our journeys in exile, just as God did not abandon the Israelites. At Christmas, God made home with us in the presence of Jesus. We've been scattered from people and things that matter to us, from our kin, from ourselves. In Jesus, we hear and know the good news. God is making us a home where we are. God is with us. We are not alone, and God will bring us home. We must be patient and trust. Thanks be to God. Just as the wise men came from the east to bring gifts to put at the foot of the manger, to share the blessings of their life with Jesus, so too we are called upon to share our gifts and offerings at the foot of the manger with the Christ child. There are three ways that you can share your gifts, your offerings, to the ministry we do in the name of Jesus. The first is you can mail or drop your gift and offering into the church mail slot. The second is you can go to beachfaith.com, click on the donate button and find two secure ways to give online there. The third is a text to give option. The information is on the screen. Follow those instructions. It will send you back a link to complete your gift. Let us share the blessings, the gifts that we have with Jesus this day. Let us pray. Blessed are we, O God, for you came to be with us, to walk with us, and to share our lives. As we offer our gifts to you, may we be willing to share in the lives of those around us, to share in their journeys, and to be your presence and spirit in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
merciful God, as we move forward into a new year, we ask you to bless all for whom the year is not being looked forward to. We think of people who are ill and fearful of what the year will bring. We think of all who have family difficulties and are, and are concerned as to how to solve them. We think of all for whom the new year is bringing money problems and all who are fearful for their jobs. Lord, for us, all the future is unknown. Help us to have the faith to trust in you, the wisdom to do the right thing, and to be guided by you constantly. Remind us, Lord, that you always keep your promises. Remind us, too, they are kept in your time, not ours. Loving God, we bring before you our loved ones. And in the silence, we pray for them, for our family, our friends, for all whom we know. May this year be good for all whom we love. Lord God, guide us in our lives. May others see your love shine through us. May our words and actions constantly point to you. May we put you first in everything and serve you always. We ask you to be with us and give us a year where we know and feel and are guided by your presence. Whatever the year holds, May we never lose sight of you and your will. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
than we know. Always more involved and in control. We will trust our lives to you. The one who was and is and is to come. We praise you, God. God who is here today, we praise you, our God, as tomorrow comes. We thank you for grace in our yesterdays. We thank you for peace in our hearts today. We thank you, our joy. Church, let us hear these words as we conclude worship for this day. Wherever this year may take you, may it be for you a year of more or less. More gratitude and less complaining. More giving and less restraining. Go in the safety of God's love, which never lets you go. Amen.